we're going to focus a little bit on breathing today because I had a special request for that. Um, so we're going to focus on some techniques to improve our breathing. Qi, gong, literally translates to breath work or working with the breath. Breath means more than just the air that I breathe. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's also life force. It's energy. It's your vitality. It is the source of um, everything. Um, so, and it kind of makes sense if you think about it. You know, you can go without food and water for a long time, but you can only go without breath for about three minutes. So, it's it's important. Um, it's connected to your central nervous system. If you think about modern medicine, um, deep breathing calms your central nervous system. If you almost get into an accident, the first thing you do is right you release that stress um, if you're anxious you might <laughs> hyperventilate and then you have a panic attack so um, we use breath a lot to communicate with the body so we're going to talk a little bit more about that today okay but we'll start with a warm-up so oh, I apologize. can you, so can you silence that for me no problem just silence that for me before we start there's always got to be one. And just so you know, you will be on camera if you're in that position. Okay, No problem. Just letting you know. Because yeah, there's a camera right there. And there's one right there. So. Uh, sorry. No everybody. problem. No problem at all. Okay. So feet together. Right hand makes a fist. Left hand covers it. Right hand represents yang, force. Left hand represents softness, overcoming it. And we bow from the head. Coming up, stepping out to shoulder distance, taking some deep breaths, and you're shifting the weight from one leg to the other, allowing the hips to go back, the chest to go down. So be careful that you're not keeping those hips stiff and pushing those knees forward. It's like you're going down a ski slope. Um, or you're ice skating or roller skating if you've never been down a ski slope. You want to allow the hips to go back. And then we're going to do a few cleansing breaths with this. So we're going to count to nine, and on the ninth one, we're going to forcefully exhale. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on the ninth one we go Okay, so let's do that again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on eight you draw in, and Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on eight you draw in, good, and coming up. So feet shoulder distance apart, toes ever so slightly out, bending the knees, tuck that pelvis, chest absorbed, and we're going to turn the hips from side to side, and also reach for the heavens with the crown of the head, elongating your spine, take a step forward so you're not hitting your hands, yeah, make sure you can move comfortably. Good. That's a good sturdy horse stance. Imagine there's no bones, no control in the arms, no muscles, nothing in the arms and shoulders. Arms are just swinging like ropes. Mine are hitting the mic. Box D. If I walked up to you and stopped your arm in mid-air, it should just flop down. Good. And slowing it down, coming back to center. <coughs> so we're going to put the hands on the belly, shift the weight over until you're all on one leg. Heel comes up, toe comes up. You're going to point the toe and flex the heel. Heel toe. Hi. Now I can count you again. And then we're going to go inside, outside. So if 
If you do place any weight on the foot, make sure it's very light. Don't break that knee. Don't tear that, any of those ligaments. Don't make the orthopedic surgeon's rich. <laughs> er. <laughs> okay, and then bring that foot back, step out, shift over, oh yeah, point. Side outside. Make sure that foot is not too far, you're not straining anything. And then bring it back to the center step. Bring the feet together, hands on the knees. Now you can make little circles around the knees while you circle the knees, or you can just keep the hands on the knees and circle them. Making small little circles. I just turn myself around. Making small little circles with the knees. And then reverse. Go the other way. And then coming up. Step out. Shift the weight over. Bring the toe closer. And we're going to make little circles on the floor with our so you can also place the hands on the belly it might help you remember to keep that belly nice and tight um, keeping the chin up and back the crown of the head up so if you look down here you're going to wind up down there you reach up your intentions up pelvis is tucked belly is nice and tight shoulders are relaxed chest is absorbed and then we're going to make this bigger if you can, otherwise you can stick with the circles. Two, good, and three. And when you get in, you're gonna reverse, very good. Going the other way, making little circles. You can always use a finger to hold onto something to steady yourself if you need to, just for a point of reference. So remember your alignment, standing knee is soft, pelvis is tucked, chest is absorbed, shoulders relaxed, chin back, crown up. I'm going to go one, two, and you can steady yourself on the bottom, and three, good, and then step out, shift over, bring the other toe closer, and we're going to do some circles. Okay, now let's see, am I broken record enough? Bending knee, pelvis tucked, chest down, shoulders open and down, chin back, Crown off, belly nice and tight. And we're gonna go one, two, three, good. And then we're gonna reverse that circle. Very good. Balance is getting better. Everybody's balance is getting better. Go over your checklist. Can you guys tell me what it is? Soft knee. Soft knee. Pelvis. Good. Chest absorbed. Good. Shoulders. Chin up. <laughs> Not chin up, chin back. Crown up. Crown. Good. And belly nice and tight. And then two and three. Good, and step out to the hip, and hip circles, or waist circles. Circling waist for a long life. Keeping those knees soft. You can straighten a joint without locking it. So there's a difference between straight knees and locked knees, right? We never want to lock our joints, unless I tell you to. Um, but we try to avoid locking our joints in Tai Chi and Qigong for the most part. Firstly, if you are using it for self-defense or martial arts, it's real easy to take somebody out of the game completely when they have a lock joint because you just keep aiming it the wrong way. Um, and for an energetic perspective, um, chi can't flow when there's a blockage. So you want to leave the joints soft. 
When you get to the front, reverse and go the other way. Good. Keeping the head and shoulders more or less where it is and just letting the hips circle around the center. Slowing down the breath. Good. When you get to the front, straight and up, you're going to bring your hands in front of you. It's like you're gripping two faucets. Now you're going to turn the two faucets in opposite directions and then turn them back. But at the same time as you're doing this, you're also bending forward or rounding your back forward a little bit like you're rounding around an exercise ball and then when you open you look over your shoulders and you straighten your spine and then you round a little bit forward so inhale exhale wise owl looks over shoulder inhale from the eight brocade You should feel this rotation all the way into your shoulders. Moving with your own breath. One more on each side. center. Bringing the hands up to the middle of the torso, separate heaven and earth. So pushing one up, the other one down as you inhale. When you're fully inhaled, this hand reaches the top and this one reaches the bottom. The one that's at the bottom is not behind you, it's in front of you where it can actually protect something. The one that's at the top, palm up and make sure this elbow is not locked but straight. Then you exhale sinking a little bit. The moment you're fully exhaled, the hands meet in the middle, then they exchange as you start inhaling. And when you're fully inhaled, they reach the top and the bottom. Careful that you're not lifting the shoulder as you're doing this. Exhale. So keeping the shoulders level. Feel that stretch in the ribs. Focusing on keeping the shoulders and the hips level, parallel to the ground. This is a perfect example and expression of yin-yang energy. It's always in motion. We usually see the yin-yang, the symbol in my shirt, as a static symbol. We usually see it standing still, but it's not really ever standing still. It's always turning and moving, shifting, vying for dominance. Things are always changing. The original yin-yang was based on the movement of a sundial shadow with the seasons. The seasons are always in motion. Nothing can ever stay perfectly still at the top or at the bottom. It's always getting ready for the next shift, just like your breath. So the moment my one hand becomes the most young it could be, it starts becoming more yin. Same with my breath. Okay, the next time you get to the top, you're going to keep the one hand at the top and just breathe. With each breath, expand yourself a little bit more. With each breath, get a little softer. Then on your next exhale, you're going to bring the palm behind the head and the back of the hand 
behind the kidney, behind the Ming Man. And then take a deep breath in. On the next exhale, twist from the hips and look over the shoulder of the arm that's down. And then inhale as you come back to the front. Exhale as you go over. Be careful that you're not applying any pressure to the back of your head. Inhale as you come back. Exhale once more on each side. Feel like you're wringing yourself out like a towel as you exhale. Inhale, separate the hands. You're going to switch positions. Top one goes on the bottom. You hold the ball. One, two, and then this hand goes up, other one goes down, and we hold it here for two to three breaths. Finding this space, the extra space in your ribs. Finding extra relaxation. And on your next exhale, palm goes behind the head, back of the hand goes behind the kidneys. Next time you're fully inhaled, you're going to exhale, twisting from the hips and looking over the shoulder of the arm that's down. Inhaling as you come to the front. Get to the front. Exhale, squeeze yourself out like a towel. One more. Then separate the hands. One, two. Presenting the pestle, so bringing the hands up. We're going to inhale, round like you're rounding around an exercise ball, you're inflating, and then exhale. So as you inhale, tailbone reaches for the ground, crown reaches for the heaven. As you exhale, elbows sink down. One more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, push away the walls with your middle fingers. Exhale. So the knees bend a little, the elbows bend a little, the uh, torso relaxes a little. Inhale, crown reaches up, tail reaches for the ground, push away the walls and exhale. Careful that you're not bringing up the shoulders. Place the fingers or you can just reach up. You have the option to look up or to keep the head forward if looking up bothers you. So inhale, stretching up, exhale, relax a little bit. Inhale, exhale. Be careful that as you inhale, as you lift the head, you're not arching the back. going to do the bear for the shoulders so I'll walk you guys through it again 
So we're starting with the shift from side to side. So the toes are turned out a little bit. The feet, the heels are about hip width apart. And we're going to kind of swing the arms a little. And you can lift that empty foot just to kind of get the motion. And then we're going to stop swinging the arms. As you shift the weight, the shoulder comes back. As you shift the weight, the other shoulder comes back. Good. Careful, you're not holding the thumb, right? It's just a roll. Good. I'll be your mirror. So I'm going to be on my left when I say right. So next time you get your weight, okay. So next time you get your weight over to your left, you're gonna step out with your right, and you're gonna go up and back, up and back. We're gonna do one more up, and as your weight's up on the front, you bring in the left. You step out at a 45 degree angle, then you go up and back, up and back. We're going to do one more up and empty foot comes in, steps to shoulder distance and you resume. Good. Let's do that forward one one more time. And then we'll try the backward one this time. Hmm. So um, feet out 45 degrees, hips, knees and hips soft. We shift the weight to the left, right shoulder rolls up and back, weight to the right, left shoulder rolls up and back. And you can lift the heels off the ground. Good. So the first step is with your right foot. So when you get your weight over to your left, your right foot comes up and out, forward, and the shoulder comes back. And as it goes forward, the left foot comes in, then out, and the arm comes up and back. And as it comes forward again, the right foot comes in and goes to the side. And then this right shoulder comes up and forward. Left shoulder up and forward. Right shoulder up and forward. Left shoulder up and forward. Now you want to step back with the left foot first. So when your weight gets to the right, left foot comes in, it steps back to the heel. You don't have to step as big as me. Then the left shoulder comes forward and back. Forward and down, and as it comes back, the right foot comes in, steps to the heel, and the right shoulder goes back and forward. Back, and when it's on the back, this one comes in, steps to the hip distance, and you resume. Don't worry, we'll get this right again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one more before we take a break after the warm up. Okay. So we're going to do the hanging forward into table, half tables. So half table is like this. Um, you have the hands on the thighs, or you can have them on the calves or on the knees, um, wherever they're comfortable, but as long as you can reach your crown forward, stretch that spine, and you're not placing any pressure on the legs. The hands are just there for stability. So we're going to inhale, reaching forward, and then exhale, flopping down. Knees stay soft, and you just hang. And then as you inhale, hands come up. You reach forward with the crown of the head, backwards with your t imaginary tail. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. And then slowly unroll, tucking the tail and stacking one vertebrae on top of the one below it. Slowly. Slowly, slowly. Shoulders and head coming up last. Good. Take, drink this sip of water. Take a little break. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to turn music on for us. I can do that now.
Okay, so if everybody's nice and warm and um, stretched out, we're going to focus on our breath for a little bit. Okay, so I strategically placed chairs around the room. So if you need to sit down, grab the nearest chair and sit down. Okay, there is no, no judgment in that. Um, I'd rather you take a seat than get dizzy and fall over because then I have to fill out an incident report and I really don't want to do that. So if you're doing this at home, please sit down if you have any dizziness or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to start with just feet shoulder width apart. Just put the hands on the belly, one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest, it doesn't matter which one, and just pay attention to your breathing. <clears throat> just see where you feel that breath moving. Do you feel more the chest rising or more the belly? Are they rising equally? Is your breath shallow? or deep? Do you feel it anywhere else in your body? Maybe you feel it in your shoulders or your throat or your collarbones. Maybe you feel it in your back or your ribs. Just pay attention. Count your inhale and your exhale. See how many counts it takes you to get fully in and fully out. Is there a pause between inhale and exhale? Good. Now we're going to focus a little bit on improving this breath. So you can bring the hands to the belly, you can interlace the web of the hands, bending the knees, making sure that your feet are about hip, hip or shoulder width apart, whichever one is wider for you. Look at your partner next to you. Help them make sure that their feet are shoulder width apart. Yep, everybody look around at the person behind you and in front of you. Help them, tell them if their feet need to be wider. Okay. Then the toes are, big toes are either directly forward or slightly out. Knees are bent but not collapsed. The feet are flat on the ground. So you've got, it's like you're sitting on a tiny horse or a motorcycle. The qua, the line between the legs and the torso is relaxed. The pelvis is tucked, chest is absorbed, spine is stretched. Belly. Relaxes, Buddha belly. Shoulders are not forward, not backward, neutral and open. Chin is back, crown of the head is up, tongue gently touches the roof of the mouth. And very importantly, relax the lower back out. So in Chinese say you puff out the kidneys, which sounds strange to us Westerners, but just kind of imagine that you've got your back slightly curved like a turtle, but without making tension in your lower back to do so. Then try to focus with each breath on expanding that back. And each time you exhale, squeeze belly button to spine. As you inhale, Try to feel the breath floating through the nose, over the throat, into the lungs, then try to drop that diaphragm and expand the belly. Tongue gently touches the roof of the mouth just behind the front teeth. Now you can keep the hands where they are or you have the option to come into standing pole. Elbows down, middle fingers point towards one another, thumbs soft. Each time you inhale, you get a little bit bigger without creating tension. Each time you exhale, make sure that you're exaggerating, you're letting those elbows droop. Elbows always point to the ground. So from here, I want you to try to, we're going to try to improve that breathing. So try shifting your weight slightly forward on your toes and see what happens to your breathing when you do this. 
Does it become easier or harder to take a full breath? Now shift your weight ever so slightly back onto the, the heels so that the heels and the toes are equal. Seeing if this changes your ability to breathe into the belly and expand the full torso. Then I want you to shift your weight onto your heels a little bit. And notice how that changes your breathing. Now find the place where it's optimal, where it's easy. Shifting the weight forward and back in increments until you find that perfect spot. where breathing feels natural and it's not creating unnecessary tension. Keeping that structure without tension. Drop the elbows a little. Yeah, so that's it. Because if you have the elbows like this, you're lifting the shoulders. So you can always bring the hands back to the belly if this causes tension. Nothing wrong with that. This is called standing pole meditation. And Tai Chi masters will stand in this posture for hours a day. Pay attention to the sensations in your body. Check your posture again. Did you maybe lock your knees? If so, just bend them slightly. Did you maybe lift your tailbone? Make sure that pelvis is still tucked. Make sure you're not holding any tension in your belly now. You want that belly relaxed. Make sure that the chest is still absorbed. We tend to, as we breathe, raise that chest, which creates tension. So relax that chest down. Make sure you're not building tension in your shoulders with each inhale. Release it on an exhale, sinking. Imagine as you exhale, you're sinking the belly to the ground. Now I want you to count your breathing again. See if you can find more counts as you inhale and more counts as you exhale than before. Aim for a slow four counts in, a pause of maybe one to two counts, and an exhale of six counts. If that's too easy, then you can go to six counts in, pause for two, eight counts out. I want you to bring one hand to the chest, the other one to the belly again. And I'm going to give you the, the opportunity to sit down again if you want. So from here, we're going to focus on the exchange between the diaphragm, the lungs, and the uh, making space in the belly area for breath. So without expanding the belly, we're going to inhale and expand the lungs. And then we're going to exhale. And you're going to feel the chest dropping. On your next inhale, try to keep the chest down and expand only the belly. Actually, let's first expand the chest and then the belly. So inhale. And then collapse the belly. Collapse the chest. Good. One more like that. So inhaling, chest only then belly, then exhale belly only, then chest. 
Good. How's that? Is everyone able to do that one? Is anyone like that's what are you are you crazy? What are you talking about? Okay. So on the next one, we're gonna try to reverse that. So you're gonna expand the belly first and not the chest. So let's try that. So inhale. Good. One more. Good. Now we're going to inhale, expand the belly, then the chest, then collapse the belly, then the chest. So inhale belly, inhale chest, exhale belly, exhale chest. So shake it out. It helps to think about um, the chest and the belly as two separate bags or sacks that you can inflate and deflate. Um, does anybody like feel like they're still having a hard time with this? This is still really difficult or challenging for them. Okay, drink a sip of water and then we're gonna do one more breathing exercise uh, that I learned from the Taoists. Check in with your body. How do you feel now? Do you feel more relaxed? Loose. Loose, right? It's amazing how much you can communicate to your muscles and nerves and body to release tension just with breathing. So uh, a lot of my students have told me that they've gone to the dentist where they're super nervous and then they've used their breathing techniques to keep them calm or um, one had to have the, I think it's the MRI where it makes a lot of noise and she used her breathing techniques to keep her calm through that. So that's always good to remember that even if you are not able to move, you can use your breath. So for this one, I am going to encourage you guys to um, grab a chair, especially if it's your first time doing it. sitting close to the front of your chair, feet flat on the ground. I want to make sure that your knees are bent at a 45 degree angle. So, or sorry, not at 45, a 90 degree angle. A right angle, thank you. <laughs> Smart ass. Okay, so I'm gonna be a little bit taller. So, um, you know, put the hands on the belly, make sure that spine is nice and straight. So you're sitting close to the front of the chair, you can still tuck that tailbone and straighten out that spine, you can still drop that chest and relax that shoulders. So let me demonstrate this first. Now if you've done yoga, you might be familiar with the <laughs> it's not that, okay? It's different from that. So we're going to inhale fully and then we're going to slowly puff out the exhalation in bursts by using the diaphragm, um, kind of like you're being slowly punched in the stomach over and over and over. So I'll demonstrate. So you're going to take a full inhale and then through the mouth. <laughs> breaking it up into as many small exhalations as you can. If that's too hard, you can start with just squeezing out through the mouth with a, a small gap for the breath to come out. We're going to do eight breaths like that, and then on the ninth, we're going to resume normal breathing. If you find that you get to the end of your exhalation and everybody else is still puffing away, please breathe. Don't pass out. <laughs> Continue breathing, um, and join us on the next inhale, okay? Um, it's not a, this is not a contest. The first time I did this, I managed three exhales uh, and then I was out of breath. So see what you can do, okay? So nice and tall, hands on the belly, inhale.
and resume normal breathing. Good. And now you might feel like your stomach muscles are sore and you've had a workout. Good. Okay. You can put your chair away. This is a really good one to practice daily. Uh, even if you don't get eight full exhalations. Oh, and if you're dizzy, please wait to stand up. Stand up slowly. Um, but this is a good one that you can practice at home daily to improve your breath control, to improve your um, diaphragmatic control um, and your awareness of your breath and your lung capacity too. So uh, it's very cleansing and energizing and you actually get the little bits of air out of those side pockets of the lungs that never really get fully empty. Okay, so we're gonna do some movement, uh, moving, um, stuff that go with the breath. So of course, opening form is the number one. So feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna inhale and exhale. So as you inhale, the spine gets longer, you pump a little, and as you exhale, you sink a little bit. Hands rise like they're rising on two balloons. They roll back and down. Elbows lead the way down. Good. With your own breath, you can close your eyes. Try to feel that movement starting from the ground. another movement that's perfect balance of yin and yang. The moment the hands get to the top, they start descending. The moment they get to the bottom, they switch and they start rising. There's no stops. There's just little U-turns. Try to feel this movement in all of your joints. The knees are involved, the hips are involved. So everything straightens up a little bit and everything softens up a little bit. chest height. We're going to inhale, expand, exhale. Line plays with bowl. Imagine you're inflating a balloon between your palms. Each time you inhale, everything gets a little bigger, and each time you exhale, it all gets a little smaller, softer. Okay. Keeping your weight on both feet, both feet flat. Everything is evenly distributed. Bones are just stacked on top of each other comfortably. Pelvis stays tucked, chest stays absorbed, spine stays straight. Mm -hmm. 
hands go a little bit soft as they move away from each other. And as they come together, they straighten out a little bit. They never touch. Shift the weight over, step one foot forward, toes point straight on that foot and shift your weight. Make sure that your back toes are out 45 degrees. You have about a shoulder width from side to side. You're a little on tightrope, more train tracks than tightrope. So not just back, but also out. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, your feet are kind of like the horse moves in chess, okay? Um, your hips. If your weight's more on the front foot, your hips face the front foot. Put the hands on the belly f at first. So then we're going to shift the weight to that back leg and turn the hips in the direction of that knee. Shift the weight to the front, turn the hips in the direction of that knee. Inhale. Exhale, push from that back heel towards that front knee. Inhale, hips turn towards the back foot. Exhale, they turn to the front and push, like you're pushing a car up a hill. You can add the hands if you want. So inhale, hands come towards you. Exhale, push like you're pushing your car up a hill. Inhale. Pushing chi. This is also sometimes called grinding tofu. If I see you've ground tofu before. So the hands move away from the torso, they come towards the torso. Watch out for that front knee. If that knee travels, then your hips are probably not pointing towards that toe. So if you turn the hips all the way to the toe, it's going to be very hard to push that knee past. Good. Keep going. I'm going to correct some people who look confused. So we're going to switch legs, so as you come back, when your weight's on that back foot, bring the front foot in, step out to shoulder distance, shift over, step forward with that other, or that old back foot is now the front foot. Make sure that you've got your feet side and back, right? And then hips are back. Turn to the front, shift forward. So you're turning, shifting your weight at the same time to the back leg, and the hips point in the same direction as the back toes. Then you turn the hips in the same direction as the front toes as you shift the weight over. Inhaling, pulling. Exhale, push. really pushing a heavy thing, you'd be exhaling, right? And you'd feel the force coming from that back. And you wouldn't be doing this. You'd be keeping it close to the body. 
if you've ever pushed anything heavy, it helps to keep the elbows in and down. Mm -hmm. that our feet are a little bit wider than shoulder distance, toes pointed out, knees in the same direction as the toes. And from here, we're going to draw down the heavens three times. So we're going to sink, opening up the palms, rising the palms as you inhale. Then as you exhale, they come towards each other. You rise and the palms come down. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much.